Hello everyone, my name is Javier, member of the UDS technical team, and in this video, we're going to see how to install, configure, and deploy a UDS 3.5 platform. To do this, the first thing that we're going to need is enter our UDS and get a new serial and enter our downloads. So we can download the appliances that we are going to need. In this case, as you can see, we have VMware platform. So we are going to install the VMware OVA format. Let's download the first one, the database. Next one, the server. And last one will be the tunneler. Once these three appliances are downloaded, let's start with the to import each one of them. Let's go to our vSphere, our local file, and we'll start with the database. We can put a name or let the default name. In this case, we'll put UDS up front. Let's select where we want the resource to be. We can see a brief details of the size of the disk. We'll choose the, the storage that we want for this appliance. In our case, it's going to be SSD. And it is recommended to you let it in frame provision. So in this case, we'll put it like that and we'll click on next. In our case, it's going to be on the LAN connection. And let's click on finish. And these steps will be the same for the tunneler and for the UDS server. So once the, the three appliances are imported in our platform, we can start with the configuration of each one of them. Let's start in order. The first one will be the database, the server, and the last one will be the UDS tunneler. So let's turn on the database. Let's enter the console and we'll wait for the machine to start. So as you can see, we will be able to enter with the root login and UDS will be the password. As you can see, when it starts, we will have some information, very useful information. In the case that we want to configure this appliance, we have uh, the cockpit. To enter this cockpit, you will need the IP and the port, it's 9090. So this is the, the step that we're going to keep doing right now. Let's go to our browser. Let's enter the IP. 15.234. And for last thing, the port 1990. So in this way, we can access the cockpit and configure our database if we need it. In our case, we're going to do it with this console. So let's clear this to start. The first thing that we're going to do is edit the interface file. You can get here in ATC, network, interfaces. So what we're going to do here is tell the appliance on a static IP. So let's put static and we can put the IP that, that you need. Address. And in our case, 182.168.0.9. Of course, a netmask also. In my case, 255.255.240.0. And a gateway that in my case is 182.168.0.1. So let's save the file and we can close. The best thing to do here is reboot the appliance so that the changes can be applied.
we will access again and as we can see right now we already have the new ip the 09 we already have it configured so with the database that will be it then we will go to the judea server let's power on the appliance this appliance uh, get an ip by the http if it's configured in the case that we don't have uh, the http we will have to do this process manually in our case as you can see we have it by the http but we are going to do the process manually so you can see how it's done let's clear everything as we know we have a, a command that it's uds setup and uds ip in this case uds ip set with the help part we can get some more information so this is what we're going to need to get it a static ip this appliance already has an ip but we are going to give one manually so we'll get uds ip set and we will tell them the ip that we want in our case it's going to be 0.10 with the net mask next will be the gateway that we're going to use and the host name of the machine that we want in this case you can put whatever you want it's going to be server 3.5 in the case that we have a DNS server, you could put it also. In our case, we really have one, so we could put it dot four and we click enter. As you can see, the configuration will be changed and it will ask you please to do a reboot. So that's what we're going to do. So now it's rebooted and now at the start, we already see that the IP that we have is the new one that we just configured. Now we can start uh, changing the appliance with the web browser. We will put the IP of the appliance that we already got. And very important, the port 9900. We will go into the setup. In my case, let's put English right now. We'll click on next. Next, click on next, and we'll have the networking part. As you can see here, we already have the configuration that we have put manually. So you can click on skip this network so you don't change anything important here. Next, we'll have the local and date configuration. In my case, uh, my keyword is I'm in Spain, so it's going to be Spanish. The time zone, also important. In our case, I'm in Madrid. So let's put you in Madrid. If you have an NTP server, you can also put it here. And we can click on next. Okay, so the next part will be a database configuration. We will put the IP of our UDS database. In my case, dot nine. The port, the username, that is the default one, is going to be UDS, password in UDS. And there's a, an instance inside that database is called UDS. So we'll click on next. It, it will start configuring the appliance. So next part, we're going to be the UDS activation, the serial that we're going to need. We have two ways of doing it with online and the recommended one. So we can you can get the access only with, with internet and the offline one that you will have to ask the support team for a activation request so they can activate your subscription in our, in our case if we're going to use the online part the recommended one the appliance of course uh, will have and uh, will need to have an internet connection so you can connect with the uds servers in our case the activation key we have it right here let's copy it and we can change paste it here. Once we have it all completed, we can click on next and it will start a simple online activation that it should not uh, take very long. As you can see, it's already done. We can start for the security part. We are going to tell the passwords so you can enter the different sites of UDS. When we talk about the root console, we are talking about the credentials of the UDS server appliance the console so in our case we will we'll put an easy one and you click in the eye you don't have to repeat the password next we have the uds super user this will be the user for the admin web access 
and in this case it's going to be called UDS admin and the password in this case is going to be UDS and we can click on next so one of the last part we have the certificates so uh, in the case that you have a, a web certificate you can indicate it here these will have to be in PEM format this the first part will be the server certificate the second part the key file and if you need it the last part will be the chain file in the case that you don't have it you can just click on next and it will be completed the only thing that you would need would be to reboot the machine and it will start rebooting let's wait for the process to finish so it's already been rebooted as you can see it's already configured let's try to access the platform with the ip that we have just configured and as you can see we are already inside our platform we can access the platform with the super user that we just configured in this case is uds admin and uds the password and we're inside we can enter right here in the dashboard and we can see everything so once this step is done we can start configuring the uds tunneler it is always recommended to, to before we configure the tunneler we can create a new authenticator the best way to do this is get into the authenticator tab and create a new simple internal database we can call it of course internal database let's tell it a label and the advanced tab we can let it by default and the display part let's let it invisible and click on save okay so once we have it created we can get inside and start creating new things the first will be a new user administrator user and we can't forget always to create a new group this new group we can call it admin and we can click ok so once we have the groups let's go with the users we can click on new in our case the new user will be schumann and we can give it the role of admin let's give it a simple password and for the example we'll get it into the admin group don't forget always to put every user into its group once we have it this configured and we can go with the uds tunneler let's close the tunnel the server and start the console of the uds tunneler this process is the same as before we will let the machine start and it will get uh, an ip with uh, the ITP that we have configured so as this case as you can see it already has an ip so let's get into the web browser and put the ip and the port that it has given us 2500 and the port 9900 we enter the configuration part select the language and we can stop the wizard we'll click on next and we'll go to the networking part we can tell it the ip that we want you can let it by default or you can change it with the ip that you need in our case we are going to change it we're going to be dot 11 the net mask is correct and in this case we'll put our gateway dot point one we already have the primary dns configured so we don't need to change that we can click on next we can see that uh, everything that we have put it and we can click on next again and it will start changing the configuration as we can see we have the url at the top and once the process is finished we can see we will see that it will get the new ip that we want okay it's done as you can see now we have the new ip the correct one that's 11 in this case let's start with the keyboard layout in our case we'll search for spain there it is spanish the time zone same as before we'll put in madrid if we are in spain and we can click on next now now we will have to do a connection with the uds broker as you remember we haven't put any certificates we will use the http connection type 
Now on the server part, we'll put the IP of the UDS server that we've just configured. In our case, uh, dot 10. The authenticator, you have two options, the administration and the internal database. Administration will be the super user that we have configured at the start of this video. And the internal base is the authenticator that we just created. In our case, we'll do with internal database. If we do this process and we can't see any, any database, it's because maybe you already have done an authentication before. So in our case, we'll use internal database and the admin user in this case, a human in this case, and the password, UDS in this case, and we can click on next. Once that process is done, we'll go with the security part. We'll put the root console password. Remember, this is the app for the appliance. In this case, we'll put UDS. Same as before, we have the work certificate part. You can choose the certificate if you need it. In our case, we won't put them, so we'll click on next. Once this is completed, we can click on reroute so that the process can be finished. Let's wait for the reboot to finish. So once the process is finished, we can get into our platform. You can put the port FR tunnel to see if everything is working. We can access. And in this case, we can see that the tunnel has been correctly configured. This will be it for now. We will have a UDS 3.5 platform running and already configured. Thank you very much for your time. Hope this video can help you. Bye.